He references the feud with Jerry Lawler. What, what is that all about? There was, uh, you know, here's a guy that I thought, after all the times that you have said all the negative things about a company, you've shown negative publicity, negative DVDs, videos, you've done everything negative for 10 years against a company. Then he comes along and says, it was business. We had to try to survive. But you said so many negative things about us with what we were doing on a national level. And then you go there and you humble yourself. You humble yourself to lick Bret Hart's boots, to have midgets wrestling with you. And you do all those things. But yet in Memphis, you're the king. And I go set at commentary, and I, 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 I can't prove it, but I always had a good idea. They send me out to do live commentary on Raw, and you know this from doing this show right here. We're doing tape, so we can stop the tape and redo something if we have to. But if we're going live right now on the Internet, and you tell me, here's your headset, and it's not plugged up, and every technician who works for that company is the best. They are the best of what do. My headset wouldn't be plugged up. Jim Ross would throw me a question. I couldn't hear him. Hmm. Who did it? Did Ross do it or did Lawler do it? One of those two people were involved in it. Hmm. Sometimes my microphone would not even be turned on. They'd ask me the question. I could hear it, but I couldn't answer it. Hmm. When I'd answer, they'd say, well, I guess Honky Tonk Man don't have a comment about that. Because the show moves real fast. We're sitting here looking at this screen right now, this monitor, right? right? I can see those questions. And when you're doing commentary, you don't watch the matches. You don't watch the ring. You watch what's on the screen. Because what's on the screen is what's going on outside to people. Mm -hmm. So if you look up in the ring, you go, Holy Christ, there's so-and-so coming in. Well, there's no camera on them. You have to watch the monitor. It's kind of like flying an airplane. You don't look out in the sky. You look at the instruments. So you call the whole thing around. I'd show up. My monitor wasn't plugged in. This is live raw on USA Network, and that does not happen. It's just something that doesn't happen. Did you say anything to anyone there? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jake Roberts would put me on the commentary. Vince Russo would go pull me off. I'd say, Jake, am I going out for this? He says, yeah. Jake would, I'd say, no, they just scratched me. Jake would go to Vince and say, they just scratched him. Vince would go over, tell Russo, put him back on. Russo had a hard on for me, and Russo and, 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 I can't prove that Lawler and Ross had something to do with it, but I blame them. Here's why. We did WrestleMania 13 in Chicago. They sent me out to do commentary with Rocky, Johnson, The Rock, The Kid, and The Dad, Sheik, and the Sultan. That was a match. Sheik and Sultan against Rocky Johnson and The Rock. Mm -hmm. Sheik in a corner, Rocky Johnson in a corner, and The Rock and the Sultan. Anyway, I'd been so pissed off about the way this whole TV thing had gone, about what they were trying to fuck me around. I said, fuck it. I'm going out here today, and I'm going to blow this fucking lid off of this shit. Mm. And if you go back and watch WrestleMania, I think it was 13 from Chicago, I started doing, I went out there and as soon as I sat down beside Vince McMahon and Lawler was sitting there, I went fucking nuts. You shook my nerves and you rattle my brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, you make a honky tonk man go insane. Oh yeah, this is going to be a big one, Vince. And I never gave them a chance to say shit. Come on, get in there, Sheik. Put the boost to him. Put the boost to him. Kill that Rocky Johnson. Kick the shit. Get paid that shit. Oh yeah, so the next day. The next day we go in production meeting. Now, mind you, they never told me what time production meeting was. As if they didn't want me to show up. Because if you missed production meeting, then you got heat from the office. 
But no one said production meetings tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Production meetings tomorrow at noon. And you were required, all the TV talent was required to go to the Production meeting, meeting. <laughs> yes. If you were doing anything behind the scenes, you had to be at the production meeting because that's when they set and told you the layout. That was the, 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 the what do you call it? Uh, the format? The format of the day, of the night. Now, that could change. At that time, it changed minute by minute. But it was the format. It was the index that you went by. So I would, you know, happen so, I, I just saw somebody say, what time is the production meeting? No one ever came to tell me. I'm going out to do commentary, but no one would tell me, like you, like you saying, we're going to shoot tonight at mm -hmm. 6.30. That's, to me, or be here at 6 for a production mm -hmm. meeting. We'll go over what we're going to talk about. But if you don't tell me, and now you show up at my room at 6 and say, where the fuck are you? How come you didn't show up? No one fucking told me. So that happened. Anyway, I got in a production meeting that day, that Monday, after that WrestleMania in Chicago. Now, I don't know if Vince was trying to bury me or what. He comes in, sits down, and goes, We had a hell of a show last night, folks. I think it's one of our best ones we ever had. And with that, he looked at me and he said, Honky Tonk Man, fucking great energy on that commentary. Holy shit, you kicked it up a fucking notch. Keep it up. Let's do it again tonight. And I could just see Jim Ross <laughs> and Jerry Lawler. Because they were, at that point, if you go back to that point in time, they were so bland and so non-energized. Non it was like, ah, oh, this is our job. We do lethargy. Ah, oh, holy shit, there's Stone Cold, Stone Cold, there's The Rock. Oh, okay. Ee, 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 puppy, puppy, puppy. Vince says, hell of a job. Great enthusiasm. Keep it up. Let's do it again tonight. And I could just feel. You know, there's times in your life when you can feel people just going, get the dagger out. We're going to chop this motherfucker up. And what happened? Huh? I got chopped up. All of a sudden, shit started happening. Oh, is that when the, the headset oh, yeah. was plugged, unplugged oh, yeah. and all oh, that yeah. shit? Oh, yeah, shit started oh, happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what would you say to Lawler if you walked in here right now? Anything? He's a sorry you. I'm a sorry piece of shit. You swing first, I'll take <clears> your fucking punch. After that, I'm going to kick the shit out of you. You ain't man enough to beat my ass, you fucking prick. He's a no-good motherfucker. He walks up to me one night. Myself and Larry Latham, Spot Moondog, we're working as Blonde Bombers in Memphis. We did a Tupelo angle. He's got his second second wife, I guess. Yeah. She's about 25. You know, once you reach 25, he kicks them out. They're too old. Anyway, he brings her up. She gives me the check. He says, what do you think about that? It was $999. We had sold out Every building, Memphis, 12,000 people, Louisville, 10,000, Evansville, Indiana, 6,000, spot shows around, 2,000, 3,000. I'm looking, I'm thinking I'm going to get at least $1,500, $1,800 check, $9.99. He says, what about that? You got your first $1,000 week. I looked at this motherfucker and I said, 999? That's not a thousand. So he turned to his fucking cheap ass cunt whore fucking wife at the time. Her name was Paula. And he says, See, Paula, I told you you wouldn't be grateful. I told you you wouldn't be grateful. You think you were shortchanged on the houses? Ah, fuck. He's a fucking thief. A fucking thief. <clears throat> Were you nervous? You don't fuck you. You don't fuck your family. You don't fuck your family, and he's fucked all everybody in his family. He's a, he fucked his son. I was there one night in State College, Pennsylvania, and you can say what you want, motherfucker. But I guess your son, he will come and maybe testify against you 
The kid showed up late. He's sitting over there with Arnie Scola. Lawler is. Kid showed up late. Back then they find you. They find you a hundred bucks for being late. Five minutes this kid was late. Brian Christopher. Five fucking minutes. Lawler said, he, no, he walked over. He walked over to Arnie Scola and he said, Arnie, find that motherfucker. He's late. Find his ass. He's late. What well, ain't none of his, you know, if I'd have been the kid, if that's my kid, my kid would turn to me and said, ain't none of your fucking business, old man, and fucking pop me. This motherfucker goes over and says, find this kid. He's five minute, five fucking minutes. We're supposed to be here at three o'clock. Kid showed up at 3.05, running with his bag. And his old man went over and said, find the motherfucker, Arnie. Probably trying to show that he doesn't play favorites, maybe. Fuck him. It doesn't matter. He should have kept his ass over there and not said a fucking word. Let Arnie Scullin do his job. If Arnie want to find a guy, find a motherfucker. Right. If you don't want to, you don't do it. It's not his fucking business. <clears throat> I showed up 20 minutes late. Nobody came over and told Arnie to find me. Arnie said, you're 20 minutes late? I said, yeah. What the fuck? What do you want me to do? He said, well, you know, Vince wants me to find you. I said, I don't give a fuck. Do what you want to do. Arnie said, I'll get out of here. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Do what you want to do. I'm going to write it off my tax anyway. That's just money I didn't make. <laughs> fuck the fine. This is what I'm saying about fines. Even in the NFL, the NBA, and any of that shit, you got a guy making $20 million a year, and you fine him $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, dollars $50,000. Guess what? He don't pay tax on that shit. You know why? It's money he didn't make. I always, it's a tax write-off. It's a fucking blessing sometimes to get a fine. I always heard that Lawrence Taylor wouldn't want to do some element of practice. I don't know if it was the, 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 the early practices in the summer or if it was the weight room he didn't want to do. So he would write a check at the beginning of the season That's for it, all here, his fines. He said, fines. these are the fines for every Fuck practice it. that I'm not coming to. And it's to. a tax write-off. Right. If, if I didn't show up for you tonight and you said, fuck him, he's late, I'm going to fine him 100 bucks. Well, guess what? That's a hundred bucks that I didn't make, so I can't claim it. I mean, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> Sometimes a fine's a blessing.